what did we see this week? We saw President Obama come up with one of the things that I didn't expect him to do, which was repeat all of the previous politicians that want to win a second term, what they do. Government gets involved in job creation, and it annoys taxpayers because the taxpayer seems to be smarter than the politician or the union boss in this case, knowing darn well that that is not sustainable job creation or job growth. What works in this province, and I'm not here to comment on other provinces, but what traditionally works is when you get out of the way of business and you create um, and foster a climate where investors and businesses want to grow. But what we also need to talk about is Jim, Jim Sinclair's uh, idea, and Maureen Karajanis brought this to my attention when we were debating on Wednesday of this past week on another station. There's this, they seem to be all singing from the same song sheet, which is this retrofit program. And for your listeners, what yes. that really is, is a government-based owned program where your taxpayers' dollars go in to retrofitting schools, government offices, um, you know, anything like that. And the government puts the money into the fund and the workers go out, so the pub sector goes out. So that would be unions that would go out and do that work to create a more green and stable environment for British Columbians. The reality is, is you're looking at two, maybe three years at best, what is going to follow suit after that? I would much rather, if we want to look at green initiatives, I would much rather jump into partnership with Jim Sinclair on something that makes sense. When you look up at the northern communities and our Aboriginal communities, that's where we're seeing the vast widening of, of unemployment numbers and child poverty, and it's generational up there. What are the things that we can do up there? Well, I'm going to you know, say IPPs because you know, David's going to go crazy, but IPPs... And my issue with this issue around clean energy right now and knocking the IPPs to the ground is that that is one area that we can give ownership to Aboriginal and Northern communities and we create generations of jobs. And what comes with that are the big players like GE and other large players internationally. And what happens there is... Private money. Yeah, private money. And what happens there is job training is paid for. And a lot of those deals that are sort of resting and waiting for government to make decisions and how we're going to move forward with those... There's a lot of toing and froing on what those companies can give back to communities. We saw this with the oil and gas companies up in the north. We've seen this in forestry as well. They get involved in hospitals. They get involved in, in donating equipment. They get involved in building schools. And we also see lots of job training programs. So what we're looking for in British Columbia are generational jobs. And, and that's what we need in northern, and, uh, northern BC and Aboriginal communities. I would be much happier to see Jim Sinclair look outside the box, stop going to the government, and start figuring out how he and his guys can work with the business communities to do something like that in BC. That's something interesting. David Shrek. Well, I don't know how many jobs are involved in what Elise is talking about, but there is nothing wrong with helping Aboriginal communities uh, and their dependence on diesel generation for uh, power. Everyone agrees with that. What, what Jim was talking about was precisely what you summarized, uh, Sean. And he talked about uh, the need to upgrade public buildings so that they do not contribute to greenhouse gas and that it would be better to spend money on doing that sort of thing than having a billion-dollar smart meter program. He might have also pointed out and I'm sure he would if he had been given uh, uh, more uh, time, that if you look at the government capital spending program that was uh, summarized in the first quarterly report that came out recently, it shows that government capital spending is going to decrease by over a billion dollars per year uh, in the next two years. Uh, meanwhile, we have billions of dollars worth of school uh, earthquake preparedness work that has to be done. If we get hit with uh, even a moderate size earthquake, we could have hundreds of children dying because we didn't make our schools earthquake safe. If we uh, do that, it creates jobs in BC. Rather than cutting government's capital spending, I'd like to see an acceleration of government capital spending so as to make our schools safe for children. Uh, you should also be made safe in your workplace, Sean. I know yeah, it's you're not in a happen. trap. It's not going to happen. <laughs> long, long, let me tell you, long, long before the legislature is made safe, every school child in the province should be made safe, and there are a lot of jobs at stake doing that. Okay. Uh, uh, Elise Mills, yeah. I mean, um, do you see okay. what he just did? This is classic NDP. So I say what I've said, which is we're talking about real economic stimulus. And, he, and David, rightfully so, 
moves us to another topic where it sounds like I'm not supportive of that and that BC Liberals or Conservatives are not supportive of that agenda of making kids safe or making workers in government buildings safe. We are. That's a separate issue. That's not job creation. What we're talking about is long term. And when I mean long term, I mean generations. We don't want a two year program. That's fine if you want to do retrofit. I think it's very important. And, you know, I don't like blending, you know, the upgrades of schools with this conversation because that's not a job creation conversation. And that's something that we can talk about. But what I'm talking about is thinking outside the box. I'm extremely disappointed by politicians that want to come, that say they've got something new. I mean, like Obama's slogan was, yes, we can. Well, my response was, yes, we can what? Create, you know, another uh, cycle of that same sort of government backs jobs? No, it's nothing new. We should all be sorely disappointed with him. And we should be disappointed with politicians that want to feed that down our throats. There's so many other things that we can do in this province, and we need to think outside the box, and the unions need to help instead of hinder. We're going to find out. 